Here's the story of Nadia. Nadia is a young mom. She has two kids. Both of them are daughters. Uh, the elder one is four and the younger one is two years old. Uh, she's a working mom and has a big family to take care of. The problem is that her four-year-old daughter, uh, she cannot communicate properly. Otherwise, she's a happy child and an active child. Please suggest what should I do? Talking to your kid is one of the best feeling in the whole world. It gives immense pleasure to parents when their young ones are putting words together. Some of those words are making sense and some of those words might not. But you still enjoy that feeling of uh, listening and talking to your, uh, to your kid. Now it can be equally frustrating if you know your child cannot communicate properly. Before we move on to this answer, I clearly remember an incident when me, my wife Kate and our 11 month old daughter, she's now 4 plus, we were going to see the tulip garden in Srinagar, Kashmir. It is the largest tulip garden in Asia having a whooping area of 30 hectares under it. Its location is on the foothills of Zabarwan Mountains, Zabarwan Range with an overview of uh, Dal Lake. Absolutely mesmerizing, beautiful beyond words. You should visit it by the way sometimes. Now back to the story. <clears throat> that day when we were going to visit this iconic tulip garden, we had another friend with us in the car who requested us for a ride to his job. The moment we left our home, my wife and I, well, mostly my wife, was talking non-stop to Mariam, our then 11 month old daughter. She was explaining her the whole journey throughout our one hour long trip. Seeing this, my friend said, why she's exhausting herself so much when the child cannot understand anything. Well, we reached his office, we dropped him off and we were on our way to the tulip garden, continuing our little conversation with Mariam till we reached the tulip garden. And now let me pause here and let's go back to Nadia for a while. Did we forget about her problem? Of course not. If we talk about normal social language developmental milestones at the age of four, few things should be in your child. Number one, the vocabulary of the child should be around 1000 plus words. They should be able to call themselves by names and call others by their names. Use nouns, adjectives and verbs in three and four word sentences. Your child should be able to ask questions, tell a story or a poem, should be able to sing a song, a simple rhyme, maybe. If you feel these developmental milestones are missing, there can be few reasons for that. Now before I will explain those reasons uh, for language delay, I want to tell you how a child attains these things, especially the language. Children learn by absorbing information uh, from its immediate surroundings and the most important being mom and dad. Now, uh, if you are mom who's actively and happily talking to your child, chances are that your child will have no problem in communication with you and even with uh, others. And most of the kids do fine if we provide them enough communication environment. Imagine both the parents being busy and you come back from office late, you are tired and you just want to eat and sleep. This is not going to be a good uh, language environment for the child. Now if we look at the reasons or the cause of language delay uh, in a child, it can be of many reasons. Number one, it can be mouth problems. A speech delay can indicate that the problem is within mouth. tongue or palate, the roof of the mouth. In a condition, we have a condition in medical terminology, we call it ankyloglossia, the tongue tie. The tongue is connected to the floor of the mouth. This can make it difficult to, to create certain sounds, particularly if the sound is like d, d, l, l, r, where you have to fold your tongue back, s, t, z, th. These sounds are hard. 
Tongue ties can also make it hard for infants to breastfeed. Second can be hearing loss. When your child cannot hear well, then he won't be able to form words well to speak. Such child doesn't acknowledge person or object when you name them, but they do so if you gesture towards them. So they simply follow you. It can also include as simple as a simple ear infection. Then we have autism spectrum disorders. But along with language delays, such patients also have repetitive behaviors. They have impaired verbal and nonverbal communication, impaired social interaction, speech and language regression. Then we have neurological problems. Certain neurological disorders can affect muscles. Those are necessary for the speech. These can include such diseases include uh, cerebral palsy, muscular dystrophy, or even traumatic brain injury. Then we have oral motor problems. When the problem is in the areas of the brain, those are responsible for speech. Such kids have a hard time to coordinate the lips, tongue, and jaw to make speech sound. These kids also might have other oral motor problems such as feeding problems. And the lastly, the most important is lack of stimulation. It is hard to learn to speak when no one engages with you. Environment plays a crucial role in speech and language. Development. Abuse, neglect, and lack of verbal stimulation can be delaying factors in developmental milestone. Now back to our story in the car on the way to the tulip garden. You remember, we were talking about that guy. Why we were talking and explaining our 11 month old daughter everything very clearly. It was nothing but a language stimulating environment. Children absorb language. Language for them is not just taught, it is caught. So what Nadia's daughter is missing is nothing but a proper language stimulation or you can say language environment. And that friend that we dropped off that day is also facing same issues with his five-year-old son he's often telling me how now i understand the value of early communication with your child and he took no risk with his second child who is far more better than the firstborn in language skills how you can overcome language delay problems number one just talk to your child it can be as simple as just narration of the things that you are doing. For example, I'm washing the car. This is water. Do you want to help me? Use gestures and point to the things that you say to them. Tell them a story. You understand? Read them. Probably one of the best things you can do for them. Toddlers love stories and picture books. Talk about pictures as you read to them. Simple rhymes and songs that are easy to repeat can help them. Even if you know what they are asking for, you anticipate their need, give them a chance to ask for it. Let your child interact with kids who have good language skills. Ask questions and give them plenty of time to respond. Even include some choices for the answers. Speak with love and affection. They feel that. Give them a chance to express their feelings. Talk to them in full sentences. Do not say water, water, water. Say full sentences. Do you want water? Do you need water, my love? And ask them to repeat full sentences. For example, I need water, please. Uh, child needs attention. Give it to them in abundance. When they are talking, listen to them carefully and patiently. You follow these steps and it will work wonders.